The project book on encaustic art contains information about using absorbent and semi-absorbent paper, amongst other things, watercolour paper. And what happens here is that the wax absorbs like this card. So it's pushed with the edge of the iron or wiped on with the iron and it absorbs into the fabric of the paper. So this little film is about an image made that way, using the edge of the iron, pushing the wax across the card and splattering it. And I called these edgescapes because they're made with the edge of the iron and they largely came about through a trip to the sea that my wife suggested. I took some photographs and there saw lots of colours and shapes in the rocks and anything can be inspiring so this was what set me off. Waves coming in. These are the edgescapes then that came from that trip. I made a series of them and put some of them into a gallery. This is the one I'm going to show you. So let's get started. Now the iron needs to be set a little bit hotter than normal. And these are the colors that I've chosen to reflect those photos. So you can see the size of the watercolor paper I'm using. I'm loading the iron up. Remember now that the wax is far more liquid than you might be used to. So you need to be quite careful here. When you turn the iron over, you'll see it all dribbling off quite quickly. I want it to dribble down the iron and now I'm pushing very evenly and steadily, quite hard down on that front edge across the card, using my little finger there to help press down. And even when I ran out, I just carried on going because if I stop, I'll get lines or there's a possibility that drips will go. And whatever goes on to the watercolor paper first is the thing that the fabric of the paper will absorb. Now there was quite a bit of wax dropped off already, so I've gone through that. And if you notice, the iron is slightly like a snow plough, so it's pushing the wax in towards the centre of the paper. It's slightly angled. And I can go over that again straight away, because there's already still wax there. Notice the angle of the iron and the steady pressure, the steady movement. All those things are important. This is a fairly repetitive process, but it's quite a quick way of covering quite a large piece of uh, paper. So again, loading pushing. Notice the little finger pressing down evenly with the handle. When I use both hands it helps, but see it's jerking a bit there. That's what you don't want, because when you do that sometimes you get lines and it's very difficult to get rid of them. Remember whatever goes into the fabric of the paper first, that's what stays there, that's what you'll notice. Now I'm cleaning the iron because what I want to do is to do a horizon shape now and I'm going to use that back square edge of the iron with dark colour so I've got some very dark colour on there working down to lighter colours but still staying within that palette. Starting off with that edge then and the top edge of the iron that's there the square edge is the one that's defining the actual horizon line and what you'll notice as it moves across is that where the paper was blank before it goes very dark but where there was already wax in that sky area it's much lighter and you only see that line at the top because it's spilling off that top edge of the iron as I move along. Now I'm going to speed this up a bit because otherwise it gets uh, a bit tedious to watch and I'm echoing the shape of the horizon line as I go across there. The paper's not taped down so it can move about. And even if you run out of wax, like I have done here, just keep going. I've got the cable wrapped around my arm, as you can see. And what you don't want to happen is what just happened then, that you stop or the paper moves or something, because once you've got a line ingrained in the paper on that first pass with the iron, it's very difficult to get rid of. You'll probably just have to try and hide it somehow. Anyway, just carrying on over the whole thing, reloading with similar colors all the time. Let's have a look from the other side. And basically, that's covered. I decided it needed some interest in the foreground, so flicking drips on with the iron like this is quite an effective and fast way of doing it. If you rattle the iron across them, cleaning it off and then going again, you can spread them out and create lots of information. Craning is another way of hitting the high spots of the existing wax. So here I've got white and I'm craning and picking up the highlights that are in the sort of sky area. It also means that I can change the tones of the picture. So I can go over the whole thing and if it's too dark I can lighten it, if it's too light I can darken it. And I can highlight those lines of the wax that have come off the edges of the iron. 
So working with different colours um, to emphasise and sort of encourage the feeling of depth. Just cleaning off the block there, you might have noticed. And now I'm working to darken that uh, distant hill, give it a bit more body. And so it goes on, just improving tones, colours, lines, adding some sharpness perhaps sometimes. But here I'm just generally craning over to improve the overall tone of the image, to colour it in the way that I want to see it coloured. Darker colours can bring up the highlights quite easily, and that's quite good. So where all those spots are and the lines spilled over from the edge of the eye, and that's the highlight parts that the wax block that I'm craning with will hit first. So a nice dark colour here now, and you'll just notice perhaps in this corner how it brings up and emphasises those high points existing in the wax. Another thing to do is to use the iron to actually um, either emphasise or add new lines. So I'm sort of following existing lines at the moment, just running the edge of the yarn through a darker colour and then using it to apply those lines. And this gives a lot more definition into the foreground. It helps to strengthen it, it helps to, to make it feel more present, closer. Different colours. Just working gently with that iron's edge, sometimes pulling colours out rather than actually applying new colour or blending colours that are there. And if you make larger spots like this, then you can work out from that spot. And it's just a case of carrying on doing this until you feel comfortable with what you've got. So I feel like I've added some line work into that foreground, just enough to, to give it interest. Now I'm adding white and I, I'm sort of bringing some softness into the, the more middle area there and then also some contrast, so along with the light, dark. And can you see, perhaps as it's happening, that that actually strengthens the feeling for this image. It gives more gravity to that darker part of the image. Rubbing in with the fingers there just helps to smudge it and sort of combine it into the existing wax. And this, this bottom corner on the left is just way too weak, so I feel like the picture's falling out there somehow, so I need to strengthen that up. And again, because I'm using a lot of the, the blocks for sort of craning purpose here, craning on top of the wax that was applied with the iron, remember to clean the blocks I didn't there, and I got some nasty marks. Never mind. The, the point is that um, these non-resinous waxes are very good for this type of work where you can apply them hot and cold and um, combine them. And if you wanted to, you could of course fuse them at the end. I'm not going to bother to do that in this because I don't think it's necessary. But you can see how that darker corner now, where I'm working quite hard to, to bring more gravity to this part of the image, is starting to pay off. It's sort of grounding the image. And then the final go over with uh, a bit of brown. Just toning in those distant hills with the foreground, the midground, giving everything a little touch of that colour so that it sort of sticks together. And there we are. This is the final result. And you can see that the crayon on wax has a nice grainy sort of feel. The spots and the lines that were applied with the iron and by the splattering have given an interesting amount of texture and information visually to the foreground. Lovely colour mixes. I like the way the spots hold their roundness sometimes. And then we look at that horizon line, the softness of the mountain, and yet the hard line on the top of it. I enjoyed doing these edgescapes. They were a real voyage for me, a journey out into the landscape itself. And it's important to remember that we can only actually express what we know. So going out into landscapes, great. Start with little cards like the project book shows, great way to learn. And from me, Michael Bossom, dream well, be well, stay well, and create with beauty. See you next time. Bye.